How's it going guys? Matt here with Code Tech Tutorials. We're going to look at another command pattern today. We're going to look at the chain of responsibility and I'm just going to implement it in C++, talk about it as I go, and that's going to be the visitor. So the visitor, the, <laughs> uh, the video. So, all right, chain, I'm just going to call this chain. And you'll see why it's chain of responsibility here shortly. I'm just going to make a few uh, things that need done here. Let's get our CMake in here and uh, yeah, we'll make a main for the client code just like so. And I'm going to make uh, just a header where to define everything uh, for this main since it's a small example. Uh, I'll just call this chain.h. All right, so let's go ahead and work this up. So what we're generally going to do with the chain of command is exactly that. We basically have commands or requests and we're going to hand them off appropriately so we get to build up kind of a chain of, of processing if you will and it should be somewhat smart design of course varies greatly depending on what you're doing and what you're chaining essentially but this is often a great way to generically handle incoming requests and stuff like that that could have a variety of different uh, options or things that they they do all right, so we're going to start out with the classic, uh, just an interface, and we're just going to call it handler. And mainly we just, well, we want got to do the old virtual thing, virtual I handler, oh, destructor here, got to be defined. And a few base options that we're going to need to handle. So if it's a chain, uh, obviously you need to have a way to add to that chain. So we got to set that up. I'm just going to make this one uh, have a set next, and it's going to return the handler when you do this. And we're going to make this pure virtual with the old equals zero at the end. Also, we're going to have in here a way to handle thing. So, uh, what do we want to handle? Now, this could, uh, we need some kind of thing to handle. So, we essentially need to work that up for our particular program. This could be anything. You might have a struct of events, for example. Uh, and it might have some certain specifications and you want your handler to go through that and do stuff. So sure, we'll do that. We'll make that the example. We're in here, we're going to have a string and just call this event message. You could just pass in a single simple thing like an integer or, you know, anything that's kind of an ID for what you want to handle. But I like this idea of making events. So message started out blank and maybe we'll also have, sure, let's have an int in here you know it'd be better if we had it kind of enumerated for the different possible events uh, but we're just going to have an event id for now and just because we're going to make this really generic so we're going to handle events so we'll pass in here an event and we'll also just go ahead and return um, an event okay so just keep in mind that instead of event here it could be anything it's whatever you're handling but the event is kind of generic you know you can add to event if you want to add more stuff that it processes while it's handling all right but don't worry we'll we'll continue we'll get to the chain part we just got to kind of set up these uh handlers because in a chain of command you got to be doing something with the request all right so we want to build like a concrete set of handlers that implements this but we want a base one in our case we're going to make a base one that just like handles cases uh that aren't implemented basically so let's do that We'll call this uh, base handler, and it's going to implement the, the handler. And this will be like our most generic one that we can specialize uh, further later. So in this base handler, it is going to be a concrete class, but typically, well, you'll see here. So privately, we're going to handle the next handle. handler. Well, we've got to be a pointer here because uh, we've got to use the power of polymorphism in this particular example. But we'll just call this uh, next handler. And let's see here. Let's make a constructor, implement the stuff we got to implement. We'll start next handler as null. So we'll just put that right here. So, so that'll just initialize that that way. I don't think we need anything else in there right now. Just make sure it starts out as null. And we need to implement set next and handle. Let's see if this quick actions and refactoring actually works. It uh, does not quite, but you know, I was saying in one of my videos, that's, that's kind of a bug and it somewhat is, but also if you have everything worked out and your class is correct, it should actually function. So usually it's probably because there's some syntax it doesn't understand or something. All right. So let's implement this uh, set next here and we want to override it and yeah, we'll go ahead and define it here. 
And basically we want to make sure it's actually going to be this class calling its uh, handler. So we're going to use this. We don't really need this here, actually. It just sometimes makes it more clear, but we're just going to set this next handler to the handler we're passing in. And we also want to return a handler. So let's just return this one. This will essentially allow us to chain handlers. You'll see later uh, when we do all the setting up, that's the point of returning the same, the same one. Uh, you'll see here a little later. All right, and of course we got to implement our event handler. So we'll go ahead and bring this down to copy it down, put override here. And basically this is going to be like the root case since it's in our base handler. So if we don't have any specialization for the event, this is what it will get, what will get called. And that'll make more sense here shortly as well. So we want to see basically, is there a next handler? Because if whatever's currently processing didn't work, it's going to go off to this one. So we need to send it along if there's another handler. And uh, we'd also want to return the event. So we will just end up returning whatever the next handler handles here. So that should be handle. And then we want to pass in the event. Event quest, sort of using those interchangeably here. But uh, I'm calling an event. You might often hear this just as request, uh, whatever you want to call it. All right. So we're going to return whatever that returns. Otherwise, if it doesn't return anything, we can actually return. I think just this class or default instantiation of an event like so. All right. So if it falls through this, if statement doesn't return, it's just going to return a, a new instantiation of an event, which will should kind of flag us to say that it's invalid. Maybe we'll even start this as negative one. So we can do checks later. That's the default initialization there. Put the event ID first though. All right. So we got a base base handler here. That's all well and good. Now we need some specialization and we got to talk about what these events might do because that's basically what our specialization is going to be based on. Uh, we're just going to handle events by IDs. So we're going to stick with that. But you might say like, you know, just something in your program that's being processed and needs sent off to be handled. That's probably what this will be. So we're going to empty my account class here and we're going to put handle uh, event one. That's what we're going to call it. Weird name for a class, I know. But it's just because we're going to be kind of passing off based on these IDs in our case. But you do what you want to do as far as uh, how you want to if on that, if else, switch, whatever. All right. So handle event one, we're going to implement this base handler and just add some functionality. So of course, it's already got this stuff, but we can override them if we want. And we do want to override at least the main stuff. We don't need to do anything with set next. That's going to be fine just like that but we do want to override this handle for what it does for this special case. So we'll uh, just copy this down, put override on it. And we basically want to say if events dot event ID, well, this is handle one. So we're going to see if the event ID is one, then we'll do our thing with this. I'm just going to do a C out for now. So I'm going to include IO stream because we haven't really defined exactly what we're, what work we're doing, but uh, so we'll just kind of say that we got here handling an event with ID one. Okay. Now we do have a message we can pass along. So maybe we'll just put that in here. Yeah. We'll just put an event message and we can just go event dot event message. These names are terrible. I don't know why I have event in there. I just, you know, let's just do underscore ID or just ID and just message kind of redundant to have the event word in front of those, in my opinion. Now we can just do event.message and let's do a end L and maybe we want like, I don't know, make this look however you want. I'm going to just space this message over a few and maybe uh, make a little arrow here, something like that. Okay. So handle event one will literally just handle ones with one. But what if it doesn't handle it? This is where uh, we want to basically do an else. We're not returning or anything in the first if, so we got to do an else. Um, well, actually we do need to return, don't we? Yeah. So we'll return event. Yeah, that'll be fine. I don't know if we're actually going to use this. Of, well, we might, we'll, we'll leave it for now. Uh, but there might be a better thing for returning in a generic sense. But now that this actually returns, the else is optional because, uh, well, it's just how logic works. So the fall through case, we want to fall through case. Basically you can do this as an else. You'd have to do it as an else if you didn't have this return here. But uh, if it's not one, it's going to fall through and go return. Well, we want to uh, 
do the next handler basically. If this one didn't do it, pass it off to the next. So we'll just call this abstract one or this base one. I keep saying abstract accidentally. It's one of the examples I looked at called abstract, uh, but we'll just return its call to handle the event. And that's gonna say, okay, well, if this didn't work, then go and do this whole thing. And uh, I think that's all we really need here. We can make some more specializations of these. So we got handle event one. Let's do handle event two, check for ID two, same thing. So you'd want basically one of these for each very specific request that could come in and however you want to identify it, probably get the point here. So now we can probably get to our client code and see how you might call these in your actual program, which you got them all set up. So let's go over to our main, make sure we include our chain.h so we get all that code in here. And let's set up a chain of responsibility here. So we got our three handlers, kind of know what they all do. Let's go handle event one, make it a pointer. So we could change it on the fly if we wanted. Monkey, I don't know, saying monkey again from the sample I'm looking at has with the animals. Uh, but we just want to do new handler for that type. Don't need to specify anything. And let's and just put the other ones in here too, like so. so. We got three event handlers. You know, you might have more than that, but essentially you've got to set up this chain somehow. And that's where the set next comes in. So we'll start with trying to handle one. So let's go event one, set next. And the next one is going to be event two. And of course the set next returns whatever you pass in. So you can operate on event two and do another set next with event three. And there we go. We've got the chain started. So now when you make an event or uh, actual event, well, these, should, these shouldn't be named events. That's going to be confusing. Uh, I'm just going to put handle in front of all these. Okay. Now we need an event to actually call these so you can see it operate. So an event. So we need to set this stuff up on this event. We'll set ID to one, set message to why hello there, and let's pass this through. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do a few other runs here shortly, but essentially we just want to uh, call from this first handle event, which has all the next one set up, pass in this event. And we should be able to see what happens from here. Let me go ahead and refresh my CMake. Fix a few basic things here. Make sure we add chain in there. And there we go. We should get that as an option to run now. Chain, there it is. Oh, I gotta do this right. I need to call the handle method on the uh, first event. And that should start it all off. Let's go ahead and hit play. Now, what we expect to see is that event one was handled and the message as why hello there and that should be it but we'll do some more examples shortly so go ahead and hit play oh we got a failure here what do we need i probably just forgot the semicolon on these classes i took it off my autocomplete this here should be i handle i handler there we go i think we got everything squared away let's try to run that again oh we're still missing something try to compile just this one let's see what we get here Oh, I need to include string, of course. That's probably the main problem here. So we'll do that. Try to rebuild. And it looks like it went okay. Let's give it a run. And there we go. I'll zoom this in a little bit. Handling event with ID one. Message hello there. What do you guys think of this rasterized font? It's one of the fonts you can select in uh, Visual Studio, or not Visual Studio, just in the, your console font, raster fonts. It's just trying it out. I don't know, I'll switch back. It's kind of weird after a while. It, it looks good at certain uh, sizes, but at other sizes it looks terrible. And this one apparently makes Ys instead of dashes. Oh, that's weird. All right, so whatever. Let's go and maybe do some more examples. So let's make some more events. Or if we change this event, what will happen? So change this to three, and now let's hit play. And you see the third one handled it. But what happened? How did that go? Well, because it went to the first one, didn't work there, so it went to the next one, didn't work there, so it went to the next one. Actually, we could put a little breakpoint here and just uh, run this in debug and even just walk through that. So as you can see, uh, let's give this a run. I guess we've got to build it in, in debug. All right, there we go. So we got it in debug and we pass it off. So we're right here, let's step into this function and we see that it goes into where we'd expect the handle event one class and checks if the ID is one, 
course it's not because the ID is three. And I think because this is a header, it's not tracking the variables correctly. Maybe, I'm not sure. No, it seems to have them here. Okay, ID three. So since it doesn't handle it, it goes to this next part. This is the chain. So when we go into this one, we see that it goes to the base one and that's where it does the whole pass off thing based on what's next in line. And you can see it goes to handle event two, tries it. Since the ID is wrong, it once again goes back to the base handler, passes it off to the next one. This is the chain of command in action here. It initially gets to the one that actually processes it and uh, spits out the message, does its thing. It does return the event. In this case, we're ignoring this uh, final return here. And uh, that's pretty much it. So a few interesting cases there. Obviously, it could be a lot more robust. As you can see, eventually, if one doesn't get processed, like if we set this to four, what happens? We'll just hit play. Um, let's step through these. You'll see the console says nothing because it didn't hit any of the cases. And it actually did something weird here. But essentially, it's going to be, you know, it's going to handle or it's going to return a default event with a uh, negative one. So we could go event turned event. Now this is like making copies and stuff, so it's not going to be greatest code, but we just want to check this return event. Turn event ID. Let's get a little visual confirmation of what happened after it went through all the handling. Let's hit play on that with breakpoint because we should see that it returned event ID negative one uh, because you would think maybe it'd be four, but we kind of went over this a little earlier. So I'll show you why it's not four. In case that doesn't make sense. It's because of the way we have this base handler and return a new construction if it falls through. So if there's no, if it falls off, there's no last handler, it never got handled. It returns a default construction of an event rather than the event that was passed in. Um, so that's why it's constructing a new one of these, making a negative one. So if we wanted it to return the event that fell through, we could just do that and it would still, you know, fall through, but you would eventually get uh, whatever the actual one was. All right. So that's basically it for the chain of command. You just set up that nice little chain codes on GitHub. Appreciate you guys. And, uh, yeah. See you in the next one. Matt out. Peace.